Welcome to a very special episode of J-Rod Concerts, the podcast live. And we are at the historic basement venue. And we are with a historic man, Mike Grimes. To say that the reputation that you have in this town is beautiful and just inspiring to people would be an understatement. As an entrepreneur, as an activist for all sorts of things like animals, and spreading the love of music to artists and to fans. It's an honor to have you here, Mike. Oh, thank you. I mean, that, that means a lot. Yeah. It, it, all came, it all stems from a place of uh, me finding a my mission statement when I was 11 years old and saying that I was always going to do a job that was music related and, and with very, very few exceptions in my life, yeah. i.e. about 10 months of my life, that's what I've done. Yeah. And, and were you, did you listen to a record? Did you see a concert? I saw it? Kiss. You saw Kiss. That'll do it. August 27th, 1975. Nice. Less than 2,000 people. Uh-huh. Ticket was $5. Yeah. Z ticket was zero one zero. I think they, or zero, it was the ticket number of 11. Ticket number 11. <clears throat> and I think they probably held out 10 tickets to give away free. I probably had the first ticket to this KISS show. And I was standing literally two feet from KISS. And I was like, this is all I'm ever going to do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. KISS is the reason. Oh, my God. So, look, I could spend with you 17 hours talking about music. But I think let's start with a really inspiring human element, Mike. And, you know, last year, obviously, was 2020. Uh, but for you, Mike, uh, it had its very unique challenges. And, you know, they say that in movies or Hollywood or books, the comeback is always better than the setback. And I think that no one embodies that better than you. You went through quite a bit last year. Yeah, well, whenever the business that you started uh, <clears throat> five years previous uh, gets decimated by a tornado at the exact same, at the exact time that your business plan says you're going to start making money, uh, it's really, it's a real blow. But it was the kind of thing that we luckily had built up some good karma, I suppose. And our landlord basically agreed immediately to rebuild because he probably could have found a loophole to, to sell the building or whatever, but he saw how hard we worked. Uh, and he immediately said, we're going to rebuild. Um, and that was one of the catalysts for us to go, okay, if he's going to rebuild it, we will make this thing happen again. And here we are now, 17 months later, yeah. and uh, it was rebuilt <clears throat> even better than before. And it, we're just, we're, we've come out really, we came out swinging. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, in March, I think he was in March when you reopened Mm -hmm. uh, I was there that afternoon, that Saturday afternoon. It was uh -huh. beautiful. Like the sunset came in through the windows and just, it was like a, like a blessed moment there. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, Lily Hyatt played and Tim Easton, some friends of our show. Uh -huh. um, but just tell us a little bit about your feelings that day uh, because that was very, that's very meaningful, Mike. Extremely moving. Well, we grabbed a bunch of friends of ours and we, I, was, I, I felt, you know, confident that... <clears throat> We could get some good friends of ours that, were, that had some marquee value and that basically that combined with people having not been to a live performance in quite some time would, and we could just do 132 people. I just knew that we would be able to create a moment and it, that afternoon was, I, I, I know that I shed a few, more than a few tears actually standing there going, wow, Lily Hyatt's rocking, Tim's rocking, yeah. and then Patrick Sweeney and all these other guys, yeah. and it was really like, you know, it was a very, or, it was it was organic, and it was, it was, uh, it, you know, it was as exactly as I wanted it to, to be, you know. Absolutely, absolutely, mm -hmm. Mike, and, um, you know, I wanted to ask you also about, you know, in the depths of the most challenging parts of last year. Like, what, what kept you going? Like, what, what, what's the must that keeps Mike going? What's your inside value system that keeps you going there? 
Well, the, the thing that actually, uh, it's really when you have built a core team mm -hmm. who cannot wait to come back to work. Yeah. Um, the support that you have from your family, the support that you have, it, it's basically an overall, you know, we've built this thing where it can't not happen again. Yeah. <laughs> if, if we're talking about the basement East, it's sure. like, no, all the forces that, that they basically, they basically conspired for it to, to come back bigger than it ever was. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mike. And, um, okay. Let me ask you about some like epic shows, like transitioning to music a little bit. Because okay. I've been here nine months and the, the energy that I felt at Basement East, like on an almost weekly basis, and in other venues around the world, and I've seen some good shows, you get them maybe like twice a year. And in Basement East, you get it like twice a week. <laughs> it's like, it's, imp it's an impressive thing. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to ask you what your favorite shows have been because that would be impossible, but tell me about when you know like that energy, that it's like that, that a show is reaching like another level and it's going to be talked about for years. What do you feel? <sighs> Honestly, I, mm -hmm. it, it happens so regularly that I kind of feel like we're always floating on a cloud. Yeah. I mean, I feel that way all the time. Yeah. And maybe everybody else feels that way about their venue as well. You know, I mean, our venue, like I say, we, it, it, was, it was built back from being completely destroyed into this thing that's even better than it was before. And I think that the bands that are coming through and the shows that we're putting on basically create a vibe where those people know what happened. Sure. We are so grateful for our ability to come back yeah. that every show just feels like, wow. I, just, I, I, I will stand in the middle of the room on a Tuesday afternoon. Like I, I'll, I'll probably go over there again in an hour and I can stand there and go, it's just amazing that it yeah. that we were able to rebuild what we had before. Yeah, absolutely. And so I don't know exactly where it comes from, but, but I, I I can only um, surmise that it comes from <clears throat> a place where we just had to make it keep going. <laughs> we had to keep yeah. going, and and it just feels great. All these bands want to come back and do like we had Hailstorm the other night right. doing an underplay. You know, we have up we have you know other shows with people playing. Like this band, All Time Low, who are right. like a, a hardcore emo band who basically want to do a little warm-up gig before their big sold-out show, and right. it's like we just feel grateful. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's just a feeling of be, a feeling of of uh, gratitude every day. Definitely. Same with Lucas Nelson a couple of weeks ago. He yeah. did, you know, he's getting that one blew me away because that came out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, like less than three weeks out. Right. Our talent buyer was like, oh, well, we got Lucas coming yeah, in. On like, Wednesday. You know. And he'd already, and we'd already had shows, uh, one or two shows with him. He mm -hmm. had a great time. Yeah. I mean, and it really comes, a lot of it comes down to the um, commitment to making sure that every band that comes through feels like they're in their living room. They're yeah. like they're in, a, they're in a place where they're safe. And I, it was, we didn't calculate any of this when we, when we built it out. Definitely. Like there was no, I never, I never even put together a floor plan. Like whenever we took over the, <clears throat> the lease and decided to build it out, there was, we walked in and I was like, I think the stage needs to be here. I think the bar needs to be here. Mm. And I think this is what, it, and the green room will be here. Right. But it was really like, there was not a lot of, not a lot of meticulous planning. I love it. Yeah. I love it, Mike. Mike, and after a Travel in Wilbury's tribute show, like uh, recently, we talked after, mm -hmm. uh, and you said something really beautiful that stuck with, with, with me. And it's, um, you know, you're not in this for the money, basically. And, and, and it shows, but you went deeper. It, it, it almost, you said it's, it's, your, it's, your, it's your soul's mission, what you're doing. And, and the money and all that comes along with it, but that's not your motivation. Can you just share with my audience that? That was really impactful. Well, that is never my mission statement has when I moved to Nashville actually was for Nashville to to be uh, on the map and people to recognize Nashville in a way other than just country music because mm -hmm. people think of Nashville they think of country music and when I moved here you know 30 years ago I and, you know to be in a band but to also work in the music industry and to continue I was like I want people to think of Nashville in a way other than um, just country music right and um, so 
all the things, and that's another reason I never got married till later in life. I was like, I'm never going to, I'm not worried about what's going to happen monetarily. That'll happen down the road. Yeah. It was just get up every day and do something music related and connect. I mean, and I love being that person who somehow connects people. You know, if I've introduced two people who start a band or whatever, if, if, if what I've, what I'm involved with, with the basement of the basement East or the record store, connects people that's exactly where my job satisfaction really sure. lies and, sure. and and my soul it's like you know what? yeah we none of us are getting rich even now it's like you know you see this this venue that looks like you guys are raking it in well we we're clawing our way back out mm-hmm. of uh, um, <clears throat> covid and everything and it's looking really good uh, but you know we're still not we're not getting we probably will never get rich but if I get up every day and like do something that matters to somebody else, then you know that's, that's what you're that, doing, that, Mike. That, that's payment in itself. You Listen, know? as someone who got into this business, also because all I give a shit about is music. Right. You're doing your <laughs> last, your Lord's work. Well, so thank you. Thank you. I mean, that means a lot. Yeah, Mike. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So there's a show that happened here in this stage. You've talked about this ad nauseum, mm-hmm. but many in my audience maybe don't know. Metallica played here like eight years ago. Yep. Secret show. The the show was released in vinyl for record yes. Sunday. It's now a legendary show. Yeah, thirteen, 13 years ago. Thirteen years. Oh my <laughs> That's God. okay. Time flies. Oh it my does. God. But I mean, there's so many angles with that story. Th- that could be a one-hour episode in itself. But let me ask you about the day of the show, or maybe the day. I think it was the day of the show, when someone from Metallica taps your shoulder from the from their s- staff and they say, "Mike, why are there cops standing outside?" <laughs> What happened? That what happened was the uh, basically Metallica had loaded in. They had sound checked. We had gotten the um, invitees in the room. Everything was kind of pretty much ready to go. And um, I hear above us uh, some footsteps. Yeah. And it's about eight cops, and they walked through the front door of Grimey's, and they walked. To the exit of Grimey, at the exit of Grimey's, walked down the steps and stood in a semicircle mm. <clears throat> in front of the entrance to the uh, to the basement. And one of uh, Q Prime's management people said, "What are the cops doing here?" And I said, uh, "We never had the cops here. There's, I have no idea, but I guess somebody needs to go talk to them." And I said, "I'll I'll be right back." And so I approached. <clears throat> this semicircle of were you like oh shit for like half a second? Well, I was just like I want to know what they wanted. I mean, we were we weren't doing anything wrong, but, right? Uh, uh, but I mean, I guess we were possibly over our official fire capacity limit here. But mm. um, I just knew that I needed to go speak to them, and I said, uh, <clears throat> "How's it going, officers?" And they said, "Hello." I said, "What can I do for you?" They said, "We understand that there is a show." It's about to happen. I said, yes, there is. They said, is it Metallica? And I said, yes, it is. And they said, can we please watch? <laughs> <laughs> so basically at that point, um, basically what happened at that point was there were about 60 people who had caught wind about this show and they were being held like at the, they were, they were standing in a line and kind of congregating outside the, in the alley. And Q Prime management said, you know what, man, it's about 60 people and we really want them to be able to listen to the show even if they can't see it. So basically they wanted me to find a way to put them out in the smoking area and right. open that back door. Uh-huh. And so I just put the cops to work. I was like, you go here, you go here, and you go here. And as they, and as they just completely said, whatever you need. I was like, this was, the, this was the soundtrack to your training, I bet. And they were like, yes, it was. Perfect. And it's really crazy because I've, I've, we've had a few times where our alarms went off or something and, I had, and the cops showed up. And I did, I've had a few times where I've had uh, uh, interactions with some of the cops and they're like, we were here at that show, man. We're so grateful. <laughs> so the, so we were on the cops' radar in a really good in way. Really for good a number. Way. And this is, that's 13 years ago, and I, they, I think they still love us. I can't believe it's been 13 years. Wow. Um, Mike, you're being so generous with your time. Let, talk some more, whatever you need. Let me ask you, let me ask you about um, you know, something I talked with Andrew Leahy the other day, actually, of Andrew uh, Leahy and the Homestead, uh-huh. a good friend of yours who also raves about you as a human, like, we, like they all do. Um, and we were talking about how in Nashville, Mike, Unlike anywhere I've ever seen, artists 
I guess there's competition, but a friendly competition amongst each other. There's a, I want you to make it. There's a, let's all make it kind of spirit. There is. Um, why do you think that is? It's such a unique, beautiful thing. I don't know. It's kind of making me a little teary, too. Um, because that's, that same sentiment extends to uh, our, my friendly competitive venues. I mean, we're like, dude, we're all in this together. And I, I've been told by many people that, you know, the relationship between bands, the relationship between venues, the relationship between the songwriters, all those things <clears throat> are a lot less cutthroat in Nashville than they are in other uh, major like music cities, you know, and I, I don't know exactly uh, why that is, but I mean, my thing was always like, man, if you help somebody get some, if you, if you help somebody else, that, that it's going to come back to you. I mean, like you can't think about yourself first, no. you know, it's like if a band needs a gig and they, and I can't put them in here. I'm gonna like go. Hey, you need to go play Mercy, or you need to go play Five Spot, or whatever. I'll yeah. I'll see if I can help get you the gig. If it's you know, it's just we all help each other. Exactly. And and now you know, all these years later, it just feels like it, it it's still pretty organic. It's and it feels great. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I mean, I think you you know we've said it all for today, Mike. But just wanted to leave you with, you know, uh, music aside. I think the fact that again the comeback is better than the setback, and the way that that you affront the challenges, the way that you put a mission statement that is, goes beyond yourself, the way that you found a focus early in life and you relentlessly pursued it, re regardless of all the no's and all the setbacks that you've had throughout your career, and you're here and you're lighting people's souls, uh, probably around the world and you don't even know it, Mike. It's, it's, it's a true honor to have you here as a, as a fellow human being. So thank you, Mike. Well, thank you. I, I consider myself to just be a cog in the wheel of all the things that I do like you know it's like it's all about the people that you <clears throat> that you bring on board and you make them feel like they're a part of the family and yeah. that's what we have there's a there's a basement family there's a basement east family there's a grimy's family and they're all great people you know yeah. absolutely and, and I would just uh, tell people that come to Nashville to you know yeah sure go to the uh, the traditional you know uh, uh, tourist attractions but basement right here basement east Go buy a record at Grimey's Independent Record Store in East Nashville. Beautiful, beautiful store with great staff. It has all sorts of goodies. Uh, this uh, stops should be on everybody's itinerary, and they will set your soul on fire. Thank you for that kind words. Absolutely, it's Mike. It's like, this has been fun. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks for all the tunes. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're actually blowing me up a little bit.